God can do. Impossible man serving in God of impossibilities. An impossible man serving a God of possibilities. What man can do, God can do. I want you to notice this passage of scripture ain't a scripture that we use to get what we want. When we want it. It's talking about what man can do as opposed to what God can do. Amen. Amen. It ain't no work magic <laughs> passage of scripture. You know, a lot of times we, we, we often pull passage or text out of the Bible to, to make things happen in our life. But we got to realize you got to tie that passage of scripture in what the passage of the Word of God is actually talking about. Can you say amen? And, and like I say, in, in, in the charismatic church, which we are part of, we are really have a bad habit of trying to make the Scripture work for us rather than us working as opposed to what the Scripture is saying. What man can't do, God can do. If I were to ask a simple question and said a million dollars would be given to whoever answered these two questions correctly, would you stand a chance of walking away with the money? Let's try it. Are you ready? Is there anything too hard for the Lord? So far, so good. Question number two. Can you put a round ball into a square object? Take some thought. But I heard a lot of no. The answer is yes. If you change the shape of the object. <laughs> so if you said no, you walked away with no money. God can do the impossible. What man can't do, God can do. Can you say man? In other words, God takes the impossible and rectify it and change it so that it will work for us. Can you say man? He takes what I cannot change with my own abilities, with my own desire, whatever it is that I'm going on, I want a different result. I can't change it because it is impossible for me to make it work. God said he can make it work. Y'all with me here? In other words, God is saying that I am the God of impossibilities. What is not possible through the actions of man, God said I can change and make it possible. Glory to God. Now, I'm not going to preach. I'm going to teach. Glory to God. In, in other words, God said, what cannot happen? I can make it happen. Glory to God. Somebody better grab hold of it. Amen. It, 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 it works if we allow God to work. It will happen if we let God do it and step back out of the way. Somebody say hallelujah. This is going to be worth shouting because this, this is insight. Can you say that? This, this is insight. I ain't, I ain't talking about you making something happen that you want to happen. I'm talking about what God wants to happen in your life. Because there's a lot of things, if I had my way, there's a lot of things about a lot of certain things, I'd make them work to my good. But God said all things work together for the good of them that love the Lord. In other words, God 
God is that I am working on what is good for you. God can do what I can't do. Notice what, what, what was going on in this passage of the scripture. You've got to back up a few to about the 16th chapter where a rich young man asked a question. And that question that he asked Jesus was, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Good master. Yes. And Jesus, first of all, had to get his attention on who he should be reverencing, the Father, not himself. He said, why call thou me good? There is none good but the Father. So he was pointing to the man, he's going more or less there, you need to reverence God first and foremost. And when you reverence God, then God will take the impossibilities in your life, glory to God, and make them work for you. So don't call me good because ain't but one good, that's my Father which is in heaven. And he said, well, what is it I need to do that will get me eternal life? And Jesus responded. This is going to be a short man. Jesus responded. He said, do the commandments. Notice what happened. He, he began to start with the fifth through the ninth commandment. He said, I shall not murder. I shall not steal. Thou shalt not bear false witness. Thou shalt honor thy mother and thy father. Glory to God. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. And when he heard these things, he said, I've done all of this from my youth up. Then Jesus said, sell what you have, give to the poor, come and follow me. See, the, 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 the man wanted to know what he needed to do. And then what Jesus was saying is, you need to change. See, you, you can't stay the way you are and inherit eternal life. A change has to come in your life. And the Bible said he turned away sad because he had great riches. And then the disciples said to him, who then can be saved? Notice Jesus is dealing with change. He ain't dealing with nothing else but change in one's life. Notice what happened. When I'm talking about can do, God can do what man can't do. When he said to Sarah, is there anything too hard for the Lord. Why is it that we expect change and at the same time never change what we do? We keep on doing the same thing and we still expect change. It can never happen because man can't make change happen unless he changes. So notice Sarah. When he asked the question, God said, Sarah, is there anything too hard for the Lord? With man speaking, Sarah knew it. It was impossible for her to have a child. Yeah. Go to God. I'm talking about the impossible or the, the, the God of possibility, the one that can do the impossible. He was saying to Sarah, you're 98. Way past childbearing, it. your wound is plumb dead. Yeah. Uh -huh. There's nothing that can happen with you physically that man can make happen to cause you to produce a child. Yeah. Your reproductive organs are over with, they're dead. But then on the same, uh, same, down the same line, he said, is there anything too hard? Oh. 
But we won't let God speak to our situation. God can do what I can't do. What I can do, I'm going to do it. But God can do what I can't do. He's a God of all possibility. He can make happen in your life what the enemy knows can't happen. In this situation, it will cause salvation. And the man, the Bible, the scripture says, Jesus loved him. But even with Jesus' love, it's not strong enough for you to get saved. You got to want change. The man turned and walked away sad. And Jesus asked the question. Uh. He wants to know uh. Are you willing uh. To have change in your life uh. Are you willing to Have change In other words Just like the square peg Or the square hole In the round ball <coughs> There's no way that a three inch diameter ball can fit in a two inch square. Uh, uh, One of the two objects had to uh, change their shape. Uh, a change had to take place. In other words, the two inch ball or the two inch square had to get four inches big. Uh, 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 or the three inch ball had to get an inch or two smaller uh, so it could fit in. God is saying, if you want to fit in the kingdom, you got to change. Just going to church ain't going to get you in the kingdom. You got to let him cause change in your life. I go to believers. Yeah, you go to believers, but the main question is, are you going to live eternally? And the only way to do that, you got to change. Yeah. It's sad this kind of preaching goes on Sunday after Sunday in the church, and folks still remain the same. Yeah. Church going, sister, will not get me yeah. eternal life. The man wanted the answer to a very important question, but he did not respond. To what he heard. Uh, oh, God. Uh, no, he did not respond positively. Uh, we can respond, but if we don't respond positively, then we won't uh, get what we're seeking. Uh, Jesus said, sell all that you have and distribute amongst the poor and come and follow uh, uh, And then the disciples, and I'm done. The disciples asked this question. Wait a minute. Hey. Is it hard? Is it that hard? To get saved. What Jesus is saying, a rich man, if it's hard for him to get saved at all, he trusts in his riches. He said it, it is as hard for a rich man to get in the kingdom as it is for an animal or a camel to go through the eye of a needle. <laughs> now the eye of a needle was the entrance gate into Jerusalem was just an arch opening. Yeah. And to get in there, travelers and folks that was doing business had to offload all of their wealth and all of their goods off their camel because the camel couldn't pass through the opening fully loaded. Somebody look at your neighbor and tell you, you got to cut loose that garbage. You, you got to cut it loose. If you're going to get in the kingdom, you got to strip yourself of your mess so you can enter the gate. Narrow is the gate. That's what the word says. Narrow is the gate that leads to life and peace. But broad is the road to this. You got to take it off. Yeah. To 
he get that? You think Donald Trump and all of them got everything now and you ain't got nothing because you chose to follow Jesus? Wait. Wait till you get in the Lord. Jesus said, I'm going to load you up with the best. I'm going to give you everything that your heart desires for forsaking all and following. Serve God. You want to know how to be blessed? 
and sleep at night and not worry about bills and folk hassling you about payment, serve God. Yeah. And in your serving God, he will train you and teach you how to get all of that load off of you. Yeah. Yeah. Too many folk in church, we're so stressed out because we don't solely seek God. You watch it. Folk that, I'm going to put it this way. Folk that come to church when they feel like it. Miss more Sundays than they attend. They're cursed and don't even know it. Come up with reasons not to go to church, not because that something comes up, but they just I don't want to go. They cursed. And, and, and God can't add to that. And, Sister and, Judy, God will not pour wine, and, new wine in old wine skin. You know why? Because it's leaking. And, the new wine will make the old wine skin rot faster. And it's going to spill everything. And, a lot of us are walking around with old wine skins. Yeah. Want new wine. Yeah. Bless me, Lord. Bless me. Bless me, Lord. Bless me. Yeah. Can't happen. Yeah. There has to be change. Yeah. I'm about done. God can do what we can't do. Let God Take the impossibilities in your life and turn them around. Go to God. Quit crying and complaining, but just let allow God to take the impossibilities in your life and turn them around. Go to God. And you'll have riches, glory, until God bless you.